Hi guys, welcome to Arman Mission. In this video, we will be uh, rigging face. We'll be talking about simple, medium and complex ways and how I do and when I think which one should be done. I will be showing some rigs that I have done previously. I will also show some general rigs that might be interesting. So you just see some stuff and maybe some tips along the video. And at the end, I will also share uh, these effects, uh, how you can add an effect without masking and over some character, over some images, whatever. So just um, stay tuned. At the end, I will share uh, that uh, tip with you, which I learned from a uh, Russian guy. Uh, he has a channel on YouTube, also interesting channel. Thank you very much. Okay, but uh, before starting, I want to thank for our channel supporters, uh, these three guys. Thank you very much. Thank you. And we have one uh, supporter on Patreon, Rafael. Thank you very much. It's not about money. It's just when you know that someone supports you, you can put away your work for some time and just do it. So because you know the people are waiting and this is an extra uh, push motivation so you can produce video. Thank you very much. It helps me a lot to just clean my head and go ahead and make another video. This is the reason why I'm doing this today and not like two weeks later. So thanks. Cool. Cool. We will be starting this character. This is complex rig. So it will be controlled from center bone, which is just being rotated. Uh, there is no like reverse uh, transform constraint here. You can see they have constraint, but the constraint is only for keeping the rotation when, when head rotates. Otherwise, it would just uh, break. Um. So, yeah, this is the complex one. Mostly I don't do this way. I, I would go with simple way, just uh, using one bone here and moving without even reverse uh, transform constraint. But this character has long uh, face and doing that way would just distort it a lot. So I would be limited moving it very little. This is very um, prominent character and it's going to be uh, big on the screen. So I decided to go this way. I created two containers, I mean two bones, and one is scaled inside that uh, area, uh, inside that uh, space and skewed, you can see. It's pretty much a circle. You can see only the bones. Let me hide the images and you can see the bones. So they are pretty much circular arrangement, spread not in a equal manner, but rather than this would align with the ear, ear, uh, cheekbone, cheekbone, and nose here, snout. So this is a way, the similar way I did the chest, but here I went with four bones, one from back, front, and shoulders. Again, uh, he is very thin and uh, he has uh, pretty much long shoulders, so I went with this way. Just so you know, this this is the way. I will share another rig with you, totally uh, different, not face, but let's share it. Uh, first, you can check the animation. This is a simple idol. We have a pretty much realistic, photorealistic uh, lizard. And for this uh, type of character need uh, like um, two pivot points. So maybe he rotates from here or maybe he rotates from here. Both, you need both of them. And obviously, uh, I keys for, for pulse, etc. Not covering the tail. But this is the way I, I went with. Uh, so if, if I rotate it here, you can see the bottom part uh, rotates. And if I rotate it here, you can see this bone is staying here because it's not a child. This one is the parent, but it still works when we rotate. Very good, right? Okay. Uh, let's discard this and see what else I have for you. Uh, for now, we will start from this character. We have done uh, animation uh, rigging the eyes in um, previous videos. I will share the link. So if you want to know how you can uh, rig the eyes so they blink this way and uh, move the pupil this way, 
go ahead check this video on the screen so normally i would go ahead add one bone and just take medium portion of the face and just move it so let's mimic what i said just now so this would be a way i would do pretty much also selecting uh, all the parts and like moving this way so i would attach everything to this bone and make sure that uh, it has higher value in the center and low value at the end so this is very easy way to do i will start from that and if i see it's not enough i might go ahead and add another bone behind but if we want to make it like a spin in a circular way like as i showed you in previous you would need to go and create because right now we can maximum have two bones like one for the face and the other one for the back part of the head which is not super necessary for this character because it's pretty much a round character and nothing would be um, distorted that much but if you want to have more bones for two four sides and two for, for uh, these portions you can go ahead and create a bone create another bone create four bones arrange them pretty much uh, align them as you would need to do and make sure they are all inside this inner bone for that select them hit parent and move them so we have now this bone root bone and inner bone which will be rotating this root bone will be scaled uh, rotate it as you want as you need you can use also shear then scale it and you can bring it and match it here and now you have two bones side and two bones for back change the icon to something more visible and with a different color and yeah you have two bones you can now go ahead and work with them because they are going to rotate and not just uh, move left or right and skew everything so this would be without the circular movement but here i will go ahead only work with one bone i think it's pretty much enough okay so as as you understand this way you just need to bind all the pieces here and for the roots or the eyes you might go ahead and this bone uh, constrained to this and maybe a little bit to this bone so it's pretty much uh, the way i would do and later you even can go ahead and add weights to the eyelids to make them perfectly working i have done a lot of uh, work uh, in the other video where i i rigged two of the faces for girl i will pop uh, show the links to that video in description but they are pretty much hard to do uh, time consuming and you you have you need to have some kind of artistic skills like sculpting skills drawing skills because you are going to distort the face a lot in 3d and you need to reconstruct a lot of portions that are not visible here great and now let's delete this i am not going to rig this way i will do it in a way i will do normally and remember at the end we will have the effect shown on the right corner in preview right where is my face here i'm floating over it okay so first i am creating bone and i need to make sure that everything starts here is 100 percent if you for example had a head i would consider that tip of the head would be um, the the hundred percent and the nose would have like 80 percent so for example if it has something like this on the head this would be the hundred percent and this would be depending on how far it is like 50 percent and starting from that i would lower the value up until to the ear where it would be pretty much zero so it's it's not affecting maybe a little bit like five percent or, or so 
Great. Uh, now let's do it. Uh, I have already bound uh, some stuff. I wanted to make it complex face. It's not just one bone moving stuff. I wanted to rig it. So you also see how with bones you can rig the face because right now it has cheekbones just so it can make uh, some special emotions, maybe sadness or something. Just wanted to fill this face. Uh, we have eyebrows simple one bone you can see it here how it um, functions we have eye containers which came from previous video where we rigged it and we have everything inside eye working we have like uh, shine glares or whatever moving a little bit while eye is moving and we have whiskers nothing complicated you can see one bone, they are uh, deforming. Oh, I'm not going to move them that much. Maybe uh, scale them like this and open up them. And if I see something is breaking and I need to fix it, it's super easy. I will go ahead and add more bones, uh, more weights. And we have ears, nothing uh, complicated. They are merged with the head. Great. And remember, having this kind of rigs, better to have holes in the head so you can hide the pupils behind them. Otherwise, you would have problems um, and you would need like using masks, which are not um, uh, suggested because they are heavy for performance. OK, let's start. Less talking. I will go in animation mode and maybe um, what we have here okay this is the animation uh, let's create another one and i will be moving this bone here and the first frame here let's start from left and right and later we will see if that works also for top bottom and yeah that's it we'll make a short loop So we'll start with this piece and do the same, exactly same as we did previously. Okay. Just add the values. And as soon as this portion feels 100%, just um, stop it. Maybe give more here. And continue that similar with similar manner just with, with this approach we will need to do some adjusting later it is necessary Okay, and maybe a few more tops here. Uh, we don't actually need the ear to move that much. Okay, let's pick up the eyes and see how it works because we need the eyes to be contained anyway. much and 50 much and maybe 45 or 40 okay so what we need to um, readjust is this ring so they need to be perfectly um, bound to this bone so we don't see some kind of holes here for that i will turn off mesh tools so we select them precisely and make sure we have direct selected and give the value with overlay it's going to be a little bit easy to see the value and yeah, so we can see we don't here have those uh, holes here. Mm. 
but we have this. Okay, I think I fixed it. I mistakenly just took one more point here. Okay, let's also fix the nose. For that, I will. Um, okay, so I want to paint on the blue thing. So right now we can see the blue is this one. So I want to paint on that and not the other one. So again, let's try to uh, lock everything and see if that helps us. And select this one and actually paint until we get this uh, whole gun. It should work that way. Almost there. And same would go for this portion. So what we did actually, this moves the nose, but we are taking from it and giving this because they are also moving the same way. They are constrained to this. So we need them to move so they are better bound. And we will be doing same for it and ma uh, making sure we are painting on blue one. And for that, we don't need to paint on brown and we will be releasing this green. So let's do it. Mm. Yeah, pretty much there. Now I can release it all and maybe adjust with direct the tip. I want it still be um, following here. Just a tip. And maybe I will give back a little bit here. So it's looking like it moves into the... We should also get some points here. So these two points will be the most affected, let's say 100%, and then we will have less value. It might give some pretty, but it's not noticeable. Now what we need is to just go ahead and adjust what we want to. And let's make zoom out. Mm, give some 3D to this portion because it's fluffy and it has to get some kind of uh, bulged out. And take off from this value. We are getting there. You can see, for example, I would actually like one point here to get more 3D. So you can go ahead and add and change it now, but I, I won't do it. Okay, let's take off some values here. So it actually curves there. Great, um, so it's not perfect. Maybe a less value here. So chin also looks like um, comes with a delay. A less value here. And more value here, I guess. Great. Okay, so what you want to do now, you might need to add another bone and constrain to this bone and make it reverse. Like, for example, I could go ahead and add a bone here. I would call it like reverse and maybe add this icon so people don't move it mistakenly. 
and let's call it backhead and would constrain it to this so right now you're actually uh, looking at three ways of rigging first one is this without this bone so we just have this bone and we we move it it's pretty much 3d we don't move the ears too much and we can use the scale to make it to make it even more to give more impact to it without breaking things i would go ahead and fix maybe part of this and i would also rotate uh, to show some kind of nice effects but mostly i would use this way <clears throat> but if you want to, if you have some portions here like maybe you have hair here behind some objects there maybe it's a scarf or whatever you might need um, actually that treating so for that you create the second way which is medium way of rigging because right now when you do that constraint uh, you will have to uh, continue rigging like binding uh, pieces to this portion it's not that um, uh, doesn't take that much uh, but it takes time so make sure to set the minus value here and here minus 100 that means it will mirror the movement so wherever you move it will go the opposite way bottom it goes up so this is pretty much what happens um, when we move our head but obviously it's just faking it because it's doing like let me center so it's doing like this it's not gonna rotate this way so you cannot do that whatever you do if you want to make this rotation you will have to use the rig as i showed previously the initially on the rabbit which had two points here one point here and the other point here so it would actually be placed inside the frame frame of reference where it is skewed it will rotate um, but in skewed pr perspective so that would help you without any constraint to make sure that it is those points actually go behind with the rotation and if you rotate it here it will go behind and up and come back so nose will come here and then slow down so it, it moves fast here and then slows down here and at the end it will pretty much slow down if it rotates so this portion is very little moving the nose while this portion this uh, this movement will move so this is rotational movement this is the first that i showed you the complex one which might take an hour but it has um more setup to it like detailed meshes um, more pieces separated so you have more control over it and that should be uh, used on only uh, rigs that are bigger on the screen rigs that are one or two on the screen i mean if if you show one or two characters that are not that heavy so you, you can go ahead but if there are a lot, a lot of characters like 100 or 200 characters like soldiers moving totally not worth it just go ahead do simple movement or even don't do at all the second one we what we did with one bone just putting it here and moving around you need to use also the scale so when you move it with scale you also some kind of enhance that fake movement shearing scale whatever you use just make sure to like emphasize that that it is uh, bent and the the last one would be the medium uh, complexity is to use another bone and with constraint just make this effect so it will be like this and no rotation a lot of talking let's make me smaller again we have already uh, constrained it great and what we need to do is maybe you want to constrain the ears to this bone or to this bone doesn't matter if you go with this bone make sure it's minus the value if this bone it's pretty much the the value with a plus sign so here two and it would be here one 
So this bone is only for mesh, weighting the meshes and what I use normally. It's for weighting the meshes and not binding the bones, uh, that are consigning the bones to it. So I would only use it to bind the meshes. I would normally uh, consign all the bones to this so I can uh, access them easily. Okay, let's see how it works actually. So here we will go ahead and add a minus value, minus. And same would go here. I think it's too much. Let's do actually 10. And I would do it here as well. I have no idea why it got distorted, why it got moved. Did I hit much? No, I did not. But without much, it would behave very, very different. So I'm still confused. Let's try again. This is something what I expect. And yeah, pretty much this is also the uh, expected value. So next we would go select this and let's bind it to this bone and give some value. I'm not going to paint, it's, it's nothing complicated. So here again, if you are painting, proper way would be to lock everything and only paint on this bone, because we don't want to take off from the ear bones. Um, okay, what I would do next, I would maybe add more vertices here so I can uh, give more uh, volume to it. It's, it's not gonna be that much visible but right now if I introduce this bone I would try to make it a little bit more polished. More points should be uh, refined etc. So this is the other way and uh, right now I don't want to make this video again super long but I promised you to show how I, I did the rigging, for, um, the effect. So I will quickly show it. Okay, maybe I'm missing something or no. Let me think a little bit. Yeah, let's try actually. The eyebrows are working pretty much. Nice. Let's test it actually. I would also test this cheekbones. Oh no, these cheekbones. Yeah, they work. So again, I would spend maybe 20 minutes more to refine things. But this is how I, I go normally. I normally would blink in one frame, close it and in like five or six frames, open it slowly. So maybe I would also uh, move the um, uh, pupils. Normally I don't do it, but maybe. Because when you close your eyes, you actually, uh, the pupils are moving down. So you are actually, the eyelids are actually pushing them down. And when you open, they are going to normal idle and eyelids continue raise a bit. So let's try it. First making it small. So we move it down and then and then raising it back a little bit faster than eyelids. So 
you can see your result. I don't know if you notice it or no, but this is sometimes I will do. If there are characters are very uh, looking nice with big eyes such as this. So anyway, let's check the animation one. So let me move it uh, this side so you can see it. This is what's happening uh, because one of them is black, colored black here. And the uh, foreground one is just additive. They are pretty much the same image. It is a sequence, but you can use one image, like one blurry image to move it over the character with the bone. It would do the pretty much the same. Let me now do it so you can understand what's happening. For that, I will disable two of them. I will take this effect, the background, where is it? And duplicate it. So you need to make sure that the image you are using is has the same color as the background. If there is no background, this effect has zero effect. It doesn't make sense. So I will make it um, this way. Maybe I will mesh it. Actually, this is actually a VFX tutorial. Okay, I need to delete this portion, delete this portion, add some bones here. Ah, let's see. Check if everything works fine. Very cool. Okay. So I have this one. It, uh, there can be cat, text, a coin, whatever you want to be there. The important thing is that there they should be on background, which is in spine, uh, because you need to change the layering order. So right now we have this, which is cool. We will put it over the character. And this will be flowing over the character with some kind of effect. I don't know. So you, you get just idea. Now we need to make it uh, duplicated. We have two of them. I will bring it back. They need to be exactly one on the other with matching precisely pixel perfect. And then I will change one of them to additive and the other I will keep normal, but change the color to black. What happens is that black has zero values everywhere on each pixel. Additive has uh, like overlays on it. So let's assume it has red color. Every red color will be added to the black. Black has zero. So red ends up being red. Everything is fine. So when I move this. Um, OK, this is the added. when I move it over it, so you can see the color pretty much the same as it was because they cancel each other. So the additive adds on the zero value and it becomes the same value. But what happens when we put something between them, anything different than zero will be affected. So let's move this down and now add a bone to it. And check it out. So we can see additive only on cat because the pixels on cat has uh, values greater than one uh, zero sorry and this doesn't work if we move out of the background so what we need to do right now is bring it here and mesh with mesh deform or whatever way you want maybe we will move this bone here using compensation mode, these bones, so the images don't move and scale it. Move it here. And make both of them disappear. Okay. So now what I have, I have something that is moving across the cat 
which I need to make bigger at some point here, maybe. And then smaller again. It's important to make sure that it's not getting out of the, the cat. So this is a way you can make a glare. You can make it even wider here. Whatever works for you. So let me disable the, the previous effect for that. Uh, we will do this way. And here you can see it. Now you just need to polish it or do whatever. So this is helpful for text, which I saw initially on the tutorial. So you could take the button, make sure you take the color of the button and move it on the button, but the text put in between. So text will just nicely glare the shine. So I will put the link of the video in description. And yeah, so this would be it for this video. Thank you very much. Bye guys.